page 305, I think it was, around 304, 303. Any of these that you were wondering about? Yo, Vlad. Number two? Okay. Sorry? Yep. So, here's tangent. Now, here's how I know that it's tangent, by the way. If we're going to talk about tangent, what do I have memorized? Screen's still frozen? How about I do that? Thank you. Here's what I know about tangent. This is what I have in my brain. I know, and I kind of can remember this part, tangent goes through 0, 0. I think that's not too tough to remember. Okay, And you can derive that by knowing that tangent is y over x. And Okay, I guess. You can derive that by knowing that tangent is y over x. And when is y over x 0? When the top y is 0. When is that? Uh, when you're 0 high, which is right here. I also know that tangent of 90 is undefined. That's in degrees. Tangent of pi by 2 is undefined. And negative pi by 2, because I know it's symmetrical. In other words, I remember that, and I remember that. And let me erase that, because they want me to graph cotangent on here. I also remember the shape of tangent. Okay? It says graph cotangent. Cotangent is the reciprocal. So if I'm going to graph cotangent, first thing is this. Anywhere 0 high is going to have an asymptote right there. Right there. Right there. How else did we graph reciprocals? What was our second step? Invariant points. What are the invariant points for any reciprocal function? Anywhere 1 and negative 1 high. Here's 1 high. That's going to stay. That's going to stay. That's going to stay. Uh, here's negative 1 high. That's going to stay. That's going to stay. And that's going to stay. Which, by the way, answers part C when you list the invariant points. It looks like, it looks like each square is worth pi by 8, if I count, because 8 squares make up pi. Is that correct if I count? So it looks like you have an invariant point, for example, Vlad, at negative 6 pi by 8, comma 1. It's negative 3 pi by 4 in lowest terms. Positive. Yeah. By. Let me check the answers here. Well, negative 5 pi by 4. Where was I, Mr. Duke? Yeah, huh. Yeah, reducing the fractions. Okay. And, oh, and the graph itself, uh, let's see, the asymptote would become a zero. The asymptote would become a zero. The, I did this wrong, Mr. Duke. The asymptote of the original would become a zero. It's going to look like this, as a matter of fact. Cotangent looks like tangent if it's been horizontally reflected and slid sideways. That's what cotangent looks like. Yeah. Tell you what I will ask. I'm not going to ask you that. Going to ask you this, or going to ask you this. So what are the equations of the asymptotes? If I didn't have the graph in front of me, Vlad, here's what I would say. Cotangent will have asymptotes where tangent is 0. Where is tangent 0? I would often the margin somewhere say, well, let's see. I know that tangent is 0 right there at 0. I know that tangent has a period of pi, so it's going to be 0 at pi, 0 at 2 pi, 0 at 3 pi, 0 at 4 pi. Uh, you know where cotangent's going to have asymptotes then? at x equals 0 plus multiples of pi, where n is an integer. Although, what's 0 plus anything, Vlad? OK, they probably wouldn't put the 0 plus in front. They'd say that's where the asymptotes are. Oh, 
What's the domain of tangent? So the domain is what x can't be, and I told you it doesn't exist at 90 degrees, which is pi by 2. And what was its period? We have those gaps every pi. And this time, because that's not a 0, I would leave that in front, as opposed to here where the 0 vanished. What about cotangent's domain? Well, cotangent won't exist wherever it has asymptotes. x can't be pi n, where n is an integer. That's how I'd handle it. And that's really what I'm going to ask you about secant and cosecant and cotangent and tangent. I'm going to ask you equations of asymptotes and, equa uh, e and not equations, and domains. Maybe ranges for tangent the ra and cotangent, the range is all reals. I might feel okay asking you for a range of secant and cosecant because they were strange. It was two separate ranges we listed last day. Okay. Any others? No others? Nothing. Okay. You can write this down on a piece of paper somewhere or inside your workbook towards the back or something like this. Less than 10.5. Hey, what's on the test, Mr. Duke? Okay. And your first hint I would give you is look at the quizzes I've given. And your second hint that I would give you is look at both review assignments that I've handed out. Okay, apparently I can't quite fit that in. There we go, good enough. So what do you need to know? You need to know coterminal angles principal angles. Coterminal angles and principal angles. So for example, if I tell you that theta equals 22 pi over 12, Better yet, make it 22 pi over 6. Find me a coterminal angle. How do I find coterminal angles? How did we do it in degrees? Organized, Mr. Duick. By the way, I'm just improvising these notes, so they're not going to be quite as organized, but I'm remembering what's on the test. How do I find a coterminal angle in degrees? Add 360. How do I find a coterminal angle in radians? Add 2 pi. What? First of all, I think I would take this and I would recognize that this is actually 11 pi by 3. I'd probably reduce it and why not get my smaller numbers? Okay. And I would take that 11 pi by 3. Now, Alex, you said add or subtract 2 pi, except really, what would I do if I was clever? Instead of 2 pi, what would I write? 6 pi by 3. Why not cut my thinking down, yes? So one coterminal angle is 17 pi by 3. That's the same angle. Sorry, that's the same terminal arm, not the same angle. You've gone around one more time. Principal angles, though, those were the one between 0 and 360 when we were talking about degrees. 
0 and 2 pi, and we were talking about radians. The angle that they gave me, is that between 0 and 2 pi? Well, 2 pi is 6 pi by 3. So is this between 0 and 6 pi by 3? Nope, it's too big. Let's find the principal angle. Take the angle that they gave you, and since it's too big, subtract 2 pi, and keep doing that until you end up between 0 and 2 pi. My first attempt, I get 5 pi by 3. Is that between 0 and 2 pi? Yeah, that's the principal angle. Okay. Remember negatives, we go in the opposite direction. I would happily give you a negative one. So you need to know that. You absolutely need to know cast and x and y and r. Cast rule, x, y, and r. I think enough said. We've been flogging that one. In fact, you remember I said to you the first four lessons for the remainder of the trig unit, all we were really going to be doing is using those first four lessons cleverly. I would argue I haven't really taught you anything new for about five lessons. It's just been, hey, here's another way you can use x and y and r. Special triangles, exact values. And we had two main types of questions here. One question went like this. Give the exact value of secant of, oh heck, 4 pi by 3. This will be a multiple choice question, almost certainly. Do you know the angle, Ellen, or are they asking you to find the angle? You know the angle, so we can sketch the angle right away. We started both of these types of questions the same way. The second type of question was went something like this be solved, and I would say secant of theta equals 2. Over root 3, 0 less than or equal to theta less than 2 pi. I've got these side by side. I hope you can see the key difference. We're going to use similar approaches. Special triangle. Here we would say, well, what's my denominator, Emily? So I'm not going to call this pi. I'll call this 3 pi by 3 and 6 pi by 3. And I think 4 pi by 3, there's 3 pi by 3. 4 pi by 3 is right there because 5 pi by 3 is right there. 6 pi by 3 gets me all the way around. I would write the cast rule. I would say to myself, self sandily secant goes with which trig function? Cosine. Is cosine positive or negative in that quadrant there? So this answer is going to be negative. I would cross out any positive answers because this is going to be multiple choice. Uh, and I would write negative. I would find the reference angle. What is the reference angle here, Sandily? Pi by 3. And then I would say to myself, do I have a triangle with a pi by 3 in it? Yes, I do. It's the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Sandily, which angle is pi by 3, the bottom one or the top one? Right there. You said secant goes with cosine? Cosine is hypotenuse over adjacent from good old Sokotoa days. So secant is, sorry, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse from good old Sokotoa days. Secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. What over what here, kiddo? 
Negative two. Would I write the over one? <clears throat> Probably not. Okay. So I'll give you some question like that. Heck, I'll even tell you what the angles are going to be. Uh, pi by six, pi by three, five pi by six, seven pi by six, eleven pi by six. Four pi, it's going to be any multiple of a third or a sixth with a pi in front of it. Or a fourth, because we also had that second special triangle, the 1, 1, root 2. Don't forget that one. What did we do here? Well, here we started out kind of similar. We did a sketch with the cast rule. But here, because we didn't know the angle, we could only narrow it down to two possibilities. Brett, secant goes with which trig function? And cosine, according to this question, was positive or negative? Here and here. We wanted to find the reference angle. Here we could just figure it out by doing a basic bit of subtraction. Here we're going to have to say, well, I have a 2 and a root 3. Do I have a triangle with a 2 and a root 3 in it? Yeah. 1, 2, root 3. Which of these two angles has a secant of 2 over root 3? The bottom one or the top one? Secant is, goes with cosine, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Which of these angles has a hypotenuse over adjacent of 2 over root 3, Justin? The bottom one or the top one? How big is that angle right there? Pi by 6, which means this angle is pi by 6 and this angle is pi by 6. Justin, can you tell me what the roots are? Pi by 6, that's this first one. And are we good enough now that we can just go like that? How, how big? Because now you're just seeing it to 12 pi by 6. That kind of common denominator trick, very nice. Because I wrote 12 pi by 6 because I was thinking 12 pi by 6. Let's fix that and make it 11 pi by 6. Okay. Ooh, ooh, hey, 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 hey. How about, what if I gave you this same question or... Solve secant theta equals 2 over root 3. But instead, I said this. Negative 2 pi less than or equal to theta less than or equal to 0. 0, Mr. Duick. What if I said instead, I want you to find the angles that exist there, not the ones between 2 pi. And I like this question. I like this question. Trevor, easy. Solve it this same way. And when you get these, look at the first answer and you would say, is it between negative 2 pi and 0? Then is it too big? Yeah, it's too big. It's positive. Subtract 2 pi until you're in the domain that you want. So I would say theta 1 is pi by 6 minus 12 pi by 6. And I would say one of your answers is negative 11 pi by 6. Is that in the domain that they gave us? Yeah, okay. What about my second theta? Is this between negative 2 pi and 0? Say no, Mitsu. With authority. Uh, so you know what? Pick it up. And subtract... 2 pi, and this gives us negative pi by 6. Is that in the domain that we want between negative 2 pi and 0? Yeah. What if it wasn't? Keep going. If I give you a really weird domain. I don't think I'll give you a really weird domain, but if they did, I'd just keep going until I end up in their domain. Or if I was, if they'd give me a positive, really big domain, and these were too small, keep adding 2 pi. Okay. Uh, the only weird one is tangent. Tangent. Why? Because tangent, the period is not 2 pi. What's the period of tangent? Pi. Just saying. What am I on? Two special triangles, exact values. So some mixing and matching. Uh, probably you can expect a quadratic trig with a square and say it's a square root. Plus or minus! Oh, four answers. Okay.
the arc length equation. It's going to be one, probably a multiple choice. How can I remember the arc length equation? What's Mr. Duick's brilliant, yea, verily, nearly godlike contribution to the teaching of mathematics? He says, although he's never seen this in the textbook, the arc length equation looks like which word? How convenient. Enough said. Uh, alarm bell number one. There was actually two little alarm bells in this unit. Prepare yourself, Emily. Alarm bell one was when you had sine theta, cos theta, secant theta, cosecant theta equals zeros, plus or minus ones, or undefined. Whoops. Clean it later. Um, now, the undefined is a bit of a fib carrot. Sine and cosine are never undefined because they had a domain of all reals, but uh, these were things that I noticed as my answer. So for example, if they said something, I don't know, like this. Solve secant theta is undefined. Zero less than or equal to theta less than two pi. Where is secant undefined? Well, what does secant go with? Cosine. OK. Where would secant be undefined when cosine was what? What gave us asymptotes? Ellen. OK. Where cos theta equals 0. Now we had several ways we could do this. One of this, one way was to use the human unit circle to recognize that secant was, in terms of x and y and r, r over x. And then you could sketch that unit circle. And you could say, when is the x coordinate 0? Because, Maria, that's what gives you a fraction that's undefined when the denominator is 0. There and there. And you could get pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2. The second way we now have at our disposal is we could actually just sketch one wave of cosine. And we could say, you know what? Secant's going to be undefined right there and right there. Because secant's going to be undefined when cosine is 0 high, which I'm pretty sure if that's pi, this is pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2. Yep. Its y coordinate is negative 1. What's its x coordinate? How far left right is that point right there? That's 0. Right? It's going to be one of these on your written section. Something equals either a plus or minus 1 or an undefined. Somewhere where your solutions are one of these four or more than one of these four corners. In fact, the written section is going to look as follows. Two graphs, maybe one graph. Two graphs, you know what? Probably two, probably one sine and probably one cosine. That's a bit of a fib. Probably one positive or negative sine and probably one positive or negative cosine. One will be positive, one will be negative. Okay. And uh, then after that, it'll be two or three exact value trig equations to solve like this, one quadratic, one undefined, and one domain change. Yep. You'd have pi. 
right? That's how we found the coterminal angles, is we added the period. Okay. What you'll find, though, Alex, is when you start adding pi, often the first time you add pi to your first answer, you just get your second answer that you already had. And then you add pi again. Oh, now I've got a new answer. And you add pi again. Oh, now I've got a new answer. But you're, you're going to find with tangent, the two answers that you find normally are already pi apart exactly. And so if you start with the first one, you'll find you just regenerate the second one, which, OK, big deal. Already got it. Well, then move on. Uh, da -da -da. Last thing is, uh, what am I on? Four, five, six. Sketching trig graphs and answering questions about trig graphs. Okay. And this is what I want to talk about for about 15 minutes, and then I'm going to shut up and give you a take-home quiz. Suppose they said something like this. Given y equals cosecant of 3 theta tell me the equations of the asymptotes and the domain these will be multiple choice questions and I won't ask you for both at the same time, but they're both very, very related. Here's how I would handle this. I wouldn't. I don't really know what cosecant looks like. I know it looks like these weird U shapes going up and going down. I remember that. But I know where cosecant came from. Kara, what does cosecant go with? Sine. Here's what I would say to myself. You know what? Change colors, Mr. Dude. I would sketch which Kara I hope by now you can almost do in your sleep hopefully you know that where will cosecant have asymptotes where sine is how high Sandley so normally, before the 3, the answer here would be x equals 0 plus multiples of pi, where n is an integer, although they probably wouldn't write the 0 plus in front. And the domain would be x can't be 0 plus multiples of pi, where n is an integer, except they probably wouldn't write the 0 plus in front, because 0 plus pi n is just pi n. Now that would be if I just had cosecant of theta. What do I have here? I don't just have a theta, Trevor. What do I have here? 3 theta. Horizontal or vertical? Because it's next to, oh, i got to be careful. It's next to the x, I was going to, next to the theta, but you know, it's next to the, where the x goes. I think I would say this. This is a horizontal compression by a third. Press them by a third. That's the same as dividing by three. So this is your final answer. This is the equations of the asymptotes or the domain of cosecant. Secant, little trickier. B. 
given y equals the secant of, oh heck, x over 2. Tell me the asymptotes. Tell me the domain. The short answer here is, I don't know. I derive it. I know that secant goes with which trig function, Tyler? So you know what? I would sketch cosine, which hopefully you know by now looks like that, where that's 2 pi, that's pi, and this is pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2. And I would say secant is going to have asymptotes where cosine is 0 high. Normally, secant would have an asymptote x equals pi by 2 plus multiples of pi. It would have a domain of x can't be pi by 2 plus multiples of pi, where n is an integer. Is that okay so far, Brett? Okay. You want to give the young fella next to you a little elbow? I think he needs it. Oh, he's with me? I don't know. You were over there somewhere gazing off into space. Joel, I don't have an x here, though. What do I have here? x over 2. Horizontal or vertical? Next to the x. What is dividing by 2? Everything's backwards. What does that actually do? A horizontal what? This is actually horizontal expansion by 2. So the actual answer is going to be multiply that by 2. Multiply that by 2. Or if I ask for the domain, that's what x can't be. Multiply that by 2. Multiply that by 2. That works for tangent or cotangent. Or So if they give me cotangent, Brianna, I think about tangent. I said you need to know the asymptotes are at positive, negative 90 degrees, plus or minus pi by 2. My domain is x can't be those. And then I just do whatever transformation. I use the unit 1 stuff rather than try and memorize a whole new method. Okay. Is that all right? So that's pretty much most of what's going to be on your test. I have one more thing we need to do before I completely turn you loose. And bear with me for one second here. Can you get out trig review number one, please? And what I'm going to do, when I gave you some questions to try when I was away, I skipped all the asymptote reciprocal trig function questions. I'm just going to tell you which ones you can also try for good practice because the textbook, unfortunately, doesn't have a lot of good ones. So I had put this list up the other day when I was away. I said questions that are fair game, and I'm just going to add here also, and you can either circle these or write these down. Uh, nope. Bear with me. I already signed 11 yet. 12. Bear with me as I... There were some. I did assign 49, yeah, I did, good. Fifty-eight, ugly, but good.
75. Really? Yeah. That's a nasty 90, which I don't think I assigned last time. No, I did not. Did I sign 92? Nope. Good. 92. a bunch of questions on this for some reason. It almost looks like certain pages didn't photocopy or couldn't print. I didn't catch that until now. Oh well. So with that one you can try those and then if you want to get out trig review number two also two Six, this is trig review number two. By the way, for some dumb reason, I said you could do number five, but you cannot do number five. Let's go up here. You can't do number five yet. That's a trig identity, which is next unit. That was silly. 13, 14, I already said sure. Twenty-two. Twenty-seven. Oh, hang on, Mr. Do it. Don't type there. You're typing here. Twenty-two. Twenty-seven. Seven, yuck, but good. Fifty-eight, good. So you can add those four. Okay? Last, I have a take-home quiz for you. Let me grab it and hand it out. 